Hey, how's everybody doing today? Uh, in this video, I want to discuss a topic that actually one of my viewers brought up. And uh, it's, uh, forget his name, J-I-N-X-K-Y-Z something. I don't know, it's a bunch of letters. Anyway, uh, he asked, where do you stand on the CD versus uh, vinyl debate? And I thought, that's a good question and I'd like to talk about it a little bit. Uh, so my thought is uh, they're both awesome. Um, I know it's kind of a it's kind of a Switzerland point of view not really taking sides but you know I like music and I like music playback equipment uh, so I like both of them. Um, now whether which one's better or not um, the uh, vinyl, in my opinion, is definitely a coloration of the sound. There is, um, uh, it's a pleasing coloration though, uh, and it's a nostalgic coloration. So people that were listening to records in the 70s and 80s uh, still like them now. And there's, there's that kind of nostalgia that harkens back to another time when records were just flying off shelves like crazy. Uh, and it's it's awesome to see that happening again to some extent. You know, a lot of the record pressing plants are reopened again. They're turning out records. Uh, it is a fascinating process um, that something mechanical, I mean, it's mechanical. You've got grooves in vinyl tickling a little stylus, a little tiny mechanical thing that has to move, physically move, and then it puts out fidelity that is even close to a CD. That's incredible. That really is. That's incredible. Um, but it does. It does. It produces sound that's really good. And uh, a lot of the times it would be hard to tell it apart from a CD. Now people talk about, uh, just had a customer today talking about uh, vinyl with me and he said, uh, you know, he listened to it again and he cleaned them and he still had these pops and clicks and stuff. Um, with vinyl, it just really depends on how clean you can get the records. Um, people will ask me about, and we can discuss this all in a bunch of other videos uh, as well, but um, for instance, this record here. I bought this 200 gram Diana Krall. You know, I love female vocals. I, um, um, big Diana Krall fan. Uh, I, I bought it thinking I'm going to have this audiophile grade recording, right? She's using an analog process. Uh, she's probably got two microphones on it. It's just going to sound lush and everything. And then I get it and it had a whole bunch of surface noise. And I thought something was wrong with the record. It was just a bad pressing or something until a rep brought in a record cleaning machine. It was a music hall. I said, I've got the record for you. We put it on the record cleaning machine. It goes around, it cleans. After that, this record is dead silent, totally perfect. That's when I learned about mold release compound. Um, so there's mold release compound mixed in with the vinyl. And when it's pressed, that it can leach out of the vinyl. So, and they don't clean the records. You know, they don't go get really washed. Uh, after they're pressed, they get quality checked, packaged, and sent out. Um, so that can turn out as noise. So actually the most important time to clean a record, I think, is when you first buy it. Uh, you think you're going to get this new mint clean record, but sometimes you don't. Um, but anyway, great record after that. Uh, that's neither here nor there, but uh, <laughs> that's just a little added uh, tidbit. Um, CDs versus vinyl. Uh, CDs, they definitely have a lower noise floor. Uh, in some cases, not a lot lower, but it is lower. Uh, if you have a really clean vinyl, then you can get that noise floor super low, even on vinyl. Uh, CDs have a greater dynamic range. It's just physics. Uh, vinyl doesn't have quite the signal to noise ratio. Um, channel separation is better on vinyl, or on a CD, rather. Vinyl, it's moving a single stylus and it's moving it in two directions and that's giving you left and right channel information. So there's going to be a little bit of crosstalk there. It's not quite the perfect pan that you can get on digital. Um, there's also bad digital 
uh, some of the early CDs, they were mastered pretty horribly because they didn't really understand the, you know, the concept. They didn't have the technology yet. So not all CDs are great either. Um, but uh, I like them both. Uh, one thing I don't like is uh, CD jewel cases. This little plastic case, if they come, if they show up and they're not broken, you're lucky. You know, this thing, it breaks the first time you open it. I hate that. Uh, so I don't like jewel cases. Uh, what I do like is gatefold LPs. Look at this. You got artwork, you got some photography, you've got all the text and information of the artists that were in the, uh, in the music that you can read while you're listening. Um, it's just a nice thing that you would want to hold on to and collect. Um, also, vinyl is very collectible um, because they do, they do runs and they might do a couple thousand and then they're gone. And uh, they don't necessarily just press them again you know, uh, so vinyl can be a lot more collectible. Digital, you can just keep buying it. They'll just keep either making the disc or they'll have it available as a download. Um, but uh, I like them both, you know, both for different reasons. Um, vinyl is a process and you have to, uh, you have to enjoy the process. You know, you, you want a clean record. Um, you only get about 22 minutes and then you got to flip it. Uh, the one thing that is cool about vinyl, it cures, it cures this thing that I have, which is uh, I call audiophilia nervosa, um, which is you, if you put a disc in, you go to a track and you're like, okay, I'm going to track five and I'm going to play the intro to that track and uh, demo it for people. And you're going to play, you know, 30 seconds or a minute. And then you want to play something else. And you're like, okay, well, check this other thing out. Check this other thing out. You're really not enjoying the music. Um, vinyl forces you to slow down and um, enjoy the music because you can't, from your seat, you can't sit there from the remote control and change the track. So you put it on, you listen to the whole side, and then you can decide, do I want to flip it and listen to the rest of the album or do I want to put on another album? And uh, I think that's pretty cool. It, uh, makes you slow down and appreciate it and you'll end up listening to tracks that you normally wouldn't have because you know on a cd you have your favorites you got okay i like these three tracks and those are the only ones i want to hear or these two and um it's usually it's usually a couple for me but um on vinyl you end up listening to the whole record and uh, that's pretty cool so i like them both uh if you want to learn more about vinyl, and I recommend this to all our customers, um, Michael Framer has a, uh, he's got two DVDs out. So his first one is called 21st Century Vinyl. Uh, Michael Framer is the uh, analog guy uh, reviewer over at Stereophile. Um, I believe it's Stereophile, yeah. Uh, but he's also got a YouTube channel, Analog Planet. Um, I watched his video a whole bunch of times. I bought this and he shows you how to set up three different turntables. Uh, talks about vinyl, why you might want to get into vinyl, what's great about vinyl. Um, very interesting, it's a few hours long. Running time, yeah, three hours and almost 10 minutes. Uh, so I recommend this to everybody, anybody that wants to learn about vinyl or learn how to set up their own cartridge. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, he's a funny guy too. He, he's done some stand-up. Uh, then he came out with his second one. If you really want to dive into it and you just can't get enough vinyl content, uh, he's got another one called It's a Vinyl World After All. And uh, that one is, let's see, running time, 179 minutes, including bonus features. So he goes into a pressing plant. He shows you the process of making a mother and a stamper and all that uh, and pressing the vinyl. He takes you into a studio where they are actually cutting the lacquer. Um, the, um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so it's just even deeper into the vinyl. So for what they cost, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a no-brainer. You know, if you like audiophile content, pick them up, check them out. Um, I've never uh, actually met Michael Framer. I've, I, whenever I go to a show, I'm like, I wonder if I'm going to see him. 
and uh, I've never seen him. So uh, I know he goes to shows, though, and I've seen videos of him at shows that I was at, but uh, I just never bumped into him. I just always wanted to say hi because I do watch his content, and I recommend it to a lot of people. So anyway, if you like vinyl, leave me a comment below, and we'll talk more about it um, because it is an interesting subject. I love it personally. Um, I like vinyl, but I will say I do end up playing more digital content, whether it's on the server or the CD player, but it's just because of the convenience of it. You can go to different tracks. I can sit in my chair and change tracks, but I can appreciate both aspects. Um, so anyway, hope that answers your question. Uh, if you guys have any ideas for content that you want me to cover, uh, please leave it in the comments below because uh, I'd love to make a video on it if, uh, if it's something I think I've got something to say about. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good one.